In this section, we concentrate mainly on creating equations of lines from given information. Now, this is opposite of what you've been doing. When you first learn about lines and graphs, you take the algebra equation and learn how to convert that into the, into the geometry, the graph of the algebra equation. So now we're going to turn that around and take information and from that create the equation, the algebra equation, which describes it. This is the beginning of mathematical modeling. In mathematical modeling, we take um, given information and convert it into mathematics so that it can be analyzed and, um, and understood. Okay, but first of all, I'm going to start with this problem. Graph the line with a slope of one-third, which passes through the point negative 3, negative 2. All right, so uh, I like to make sure that you've that you're really starting to get a handle on what slope is. And one thing about this, the slope is, is positive, isn't it? So positive slopes go in an up, lower left, upper right direction. We say this is increasing. You know, we read left to right typically, and so from our standard orientation, this, is, this graph is increasing. And all slopes that are positive are increasing. Now, a slope of this slope I've drawn is approximately 1. In other words, the, and 1 is 1 divided by 1, so the, the ratio of rise to run is, is about equal. And so a slope of 1 describes a line which moves upward at about a 45 degree angle from the horizontal. Alright, um, our slope of one-third is a little gentler. It will go off about like this because the rise to run ratio is 1 to 3. And so it rises one unit for every three units it pushes forward. So this is a, a rather gentle slope, and a, a steep line would have a large, no, larger number. For example, this very steep line, which is almost vertical, uh, could perhaps have a slope of 10. In other words, up 10 units and right 1 unit. So here is a, a large slope. Let me, let me just say this has slope equal to 10. All right, now a horizontal line has what slope? Well, the rise is zero, and the run is some number. So if you were to calculate a slope, you would get zero divided by a number, which would be a zero. So horizontal lines have a slope of zero. And then lines which fall, these are decreasing lines. So a decreasing line has a negative slope. For example, this one looks like it's about 45 degrees. So let's say this slope is, is negative 1 to 1, or simplifies to negative 1. So there's a negative slope, and it's decreasing as we move left to right. Uh, similarly, if it's a very steep, decreasing slope, it's going to be a larger negative number. If it's a very shallow decrease, it's a, very, it's a smaller negative number. Vertical lines, incidentally... Um, don't have a slope number that you can put, put on it. And you can kind of imagine, well, if as I increase the steepness in this direction, these slopes are getting larger in the positive, but if I decrease from the, if I, you know, increase the steepness this way, these slopes are getting larger in the negative direction. And so those uh, larger positive, larger negative do not, do not meet. And so um, it turns out the vertical lines there is no slope number you can put on it. As a matter of fact, if you want to calculate one, you would get a division by zero. So we say that the uh, slope is undefined for vertical lines. All right, now that uh, little bit of background there about slope, and I, I really want you to understand slope in, in those terms. What does uh, a slope of one-third represent, for example? Uh, all right, so to do this equation, Draw a graph, and it's a nice big graph. Let 
the point through which the line passes is negative 3, negative 2. So I'm going to count negative 3 here, down 2. So this point is approximately here. And the slope is one third, which means that to, to get to another point, I would go up one unit and write three units. So let me, let me kind of draw that in. It has a one to three ratio. A rise of one unit and a forward run of three units. I could continue to make more points. If I, if I go from here and go up one unit and write three units, that puts me over there. So if we connect the dots. This, whoops, I slightly missed there. That's what happens when you don't use a straight edge. Sometimes. Um, so our line has a gentle slope of one third, passes through negative three, negative two. Let me erase this green stuff here. And am I done with graphing? I hope you're thinking no, because I'm missing information on a graph about scale. So I need a few numbers on the graph. If you want full credit, put a couple numbers in. Doesn't have to be very many numbers. I don't expect you to put numbers all over the grid. But put a couple of them on there so that the reader knows what scale you're using. That's going to be important sometimes. So there's our graph. Now I would like to take this problem just a little bit further because we know where the y-intercept is. The y-intercept intercept and I usually print for these videos so let me, let me do that right. The y-intercept is at negative 1. Okay. A lot of textbooks, a lot of people who teach will say the y-intercept is at the point 0, negative 1. And that's, that's obviously correct. Um, to me, it's, it doesn't matter. Y-intercept means that it's crossing the y-axis, in this case, at negative 1. All right, and, and we got that again from taking this point and going up over 3. We landed exactly at the y-axis. Now then, I have slope, I have the y-intercept, we can now write the equation of the line. So this equation is y equals to slope times x plus the y-intercept. Well, plus negative 1 is minus 1, same thing. So the equation of this line is y equals 1 third x minus 1. The nice thing about this, this form of the equation is that it gives you the, the key information. Negative 1 is this number that's added or subtracted is the y-intercept, so that defines a location. The number in front of x, 1 third, defines the slope. This only works when you have solved for y. So this is in a, um, in a function form. Recall we talked about functions in section 2, 1. This is in the form of a linear function. In fact, we could write it as f of x equals 1 third x minus 1. And this is where y and f of x really serve the same role. But uh, I think in terms of graphing, most people would write in that, in that format, since we have x's and y's on our plane, Cartesian plane. Okay, um, let me uh, do one more. 